Let us open our Bible to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Pursue, overtake, and recover your possessions. Pursue, overtake, and recover your possessions. 1 Samuel 30 verses 1 to 6. Ziklag spoiled by the Amalekites. The Amalekites are the descendants of Amalek, son of Aliphaz and grandson of Esau or Edom, the twin brother of Jacob, Israel. The name Amalekat is often interpreted as dweller, dweller in the valley or occasionally as warlike, as people of prey and even as cavemen. When we go abroad in, in the way of our duty, we may comfortably hope that God will take care of our family in our absence, but not otherwise. If when we come from a journey, we find our abode in peace, and not laid waste, let Yahweh be praised for it. David and his men found Ziklag burned down. Their family members and livestock and many of their possessions were missing. Their first emotion was grief and they wept. David's men's second emotion was bitterness. They murmured against David. They came to the conclusion that David, because of his wrong decisions, was the cause of their family's destruction. They thought that David carried a curse and deserved to be stoned in order to relieve their wrath. For this is a leader, David, who was ready to make them fight their own Israelite people beside King Ashes and the Philistines' enemies of Yahweh. His decision to do so was perhaps because their own families were perceived to be safe in Ziklag. Stoning stands apart from other forms of capital punishment. In, in that entire, in that the entire community participates in the killing. Stoning was the emotional violence, violent, emotional and violent expression of people's anger, and it's often expressly prescribed as a mode of execution in Exodus 17 verse 4, 8 verse 22, Numbers 14 verse 10, verse Samuel 30 verse 6 here, 1 Kings 12 verse 18 and 2 Chronicles 10 verse 18. Great faith must expect such severe trials as David and his men being plundered by the enemy. But observe that David was brought thus low only just he was raised to the throne. When things are at the worst with the house of God or the people of God, a man of God or woman of God, then they begin, things begin to mend. David encouraged himself in Yahweh, his God. His men fretted at uh, their loss. The soul of the people was bitter. Their own discontent and impatience added to the affliction and misery. But David took the blow better, even though he had more reason than any of them to lament it. They gave liberty to their emotions and passions. 
But David set his graces to work. And while they dispirited each other, David kept his spirit calm by encouraging himself in God. Those who have taken Yahweh for their God may take encouragement from him in the worst times. 1 Samuel 30 verses 7 to 15 David overtakes the Amalekites. Verses 7 to 8. This event seems to turn David back to Yahweh. He calls for the priest and the effort, which is the rope, the mantle of the priest of the priest. He calls for the priest and the effort to determine whether Yahweh will have them pursue the raiders. God assures him of success in rescuing everything. Once again, David used the Urim and Tumim, which is on the breastplate of the effort of the priest, which is used to cast lots. So he used the casting of lots to know Yahweh's answer to his question as he had no idea whether he would ever recover his family, community and their properties. Always remember to cast the lots to seek Yahweh's answers to your questions. But if only you are faithful to him, because God doesn't answer the prayers of a sinner. Verse 10. The trouble is that David's group has been physically challenged during the almost 60 mile march from Afek back to Ziglag. Then the emotional toll of finding their city in ruin and their families absent makes things worse. Not everyone is up to marching off with David right away. They all start, but a third of them are too exhausted to continue. The other two thirds leave some of their gear, uh, with the 200 staying behind in order to move faster. If and this is also this is also an opportunity to see the miracle of God. That after all this fatigue <laughs> of keep on walking, walking, they were able to defeat a vast army. That's a miracle of God. If in all our ways, especially when they are just, as in this case, we acknowledge Yahweh. We may expect that he will direct our steps. David, in tenderness to his men, by no means would urge them beyond their strength. Yeshua, the son of David, thus considers the frames, the bodies of his followers, who are not all alike strong and vigorous in their spiritual pursuits and conflicts, but where we are weak, Christ's grace is sufficient to us, for his grace is made perfect in weakness. And then we are strong. I was just quoting here 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10, which is loaded with a lot of spiritual truth. God once again wants you to be humble not to show yourself strong. If you show yourself strong, he cannot help you because you believe that you are strong. Sometimes it looks like it's obvious, but it's not that obvious in the, in the, in the, practic in the practical life. People forget that very quickly, and they believe that they are able to solve their problem, they are strong, and, and while they, they believe that they go back to God and pray, it can work. We need uh, uh, Apostle Paul who wrote this. He said he is 
He is happy when he is the weakest. Even when they had stoned him, he was on the floor left for death. He said he is happy that way because he is low. That is where God is going to show, show his power in him and lift him up. And he did. And for, for quite two, uh, for two, two, two thousand years, we are keeping following Paul today. While many, many Roman emperors who, are, who were the greatest, the most powerful, are forgotten. We are not even talking of them. But we are talking of Paul. Paul, Paul, all over the world. The trail was indeed cold. David didn't even know who he was chasing. Then he found a poor Egyptian slave, scarcely alive, whom Yahweh turned into the means of enormous good to David. He hadn't had food or water for three days. They fed him and discovered it had been the Amalekites who had raised the who had raided Ziklag from him to avenge David's raiding of their uh, raiding their towns? Once again, be careful. What happens in nowadays is that when you are walking on the tree, a street, you will see someone very weak. You don't know if he is dying. If he has stayed three days without eating. And what we used to do is pass our way. Telling ourselves maybe some person will be take care of him. But not me. Had David and his men passed the day that way. To keep on going their way. Without stopping and helping that poor person by the roadside. They wouldn't know where the Amalekites are. The angel of God is very often in front of us on the needy. And that is where God tested our faith to see how we're going to do. This means when you see a person in, the, in need, always help. Or feel yourself called, feel yourself called to go, to help, to give a, a helping hand. And the Lord will bless you because that is the way he will bring your helper like this one. Your helper to you, your angel of help to you. After being promised protection, the Egyptians even agrees to lead David to the Amalekite camp. Providence did make this poor servant who was basely used by his master justly an instrument of the destruction of the Amalekites. For Yahweh hears the cry of the oppressed. Those who shut up their compassion from persons in distress are not worthy to bear the, the, the name of true of true Israelites, of, of true Christ followers, of true Christians. We should neither do an injury nor deny a kindness to any man. For sometimes or another, for sometimes or other, it may be in the power of the lowest to repay you either kindness or injury. 1 Samuel 30 verses 16 to 20, David recovers what had been lost. The timing couldn't have been better. When David's men arrive, the much larger group of Amalekites are celebrating their easy conquest, drinking and disorganized. Sinners are nearest to ruin, to ruin peace and safety when they put the evil day far from them. Nor does anything give our spiritual enemies more advantage over us than sensuality and indulgence. 
eating and drinking and dancing have been the soft and pleasant way in which many have gone down to the world of the dead. David and his men attacked a drinking and disorganized enemy, resulting in a day-long slaughter. 400 young men escaped in camels, but every other Amalekite soldier is killed. The next day, David recovers everything that had been taken from Ziklag, wives, families, animals, and possessions, including the biggest spoil the enemy took from the Philistines. Nothing was lost, but a great deal was gained. 1 Samuel 30 verses 21 to 31. David's distribution of the spoil. When David men, David's men return, they, there are those among them who don't want to share the plunder they have accumulated with the 200 men who remain behind. What Yahweh gives us, he designs that we should do good with it. What Yahweh gives us, he designs that we should do good with it. Verses 26 to 31. David steps in and sees that his soldiers all get equal share. In distributing the spoil, David was, was just and kind. In addition, David sends some of their new wealth to friends and elders at various, various places throughout Judah. His decision will have a far-reaching effect. Many of the recipients are men of considerable influence who will soon be among the first to embrace David as a king. Those who delight in putting hardships upon their brethren are men of certain indeed. They do not care about those 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 who are starved uh, and uh, they are just interested in being fed to the food. David was generous and kind to all his friends, including fellow Israelites in Judah. Those who consider Yahweh as the giver of their abundance will dispose of it with fairness and liberality. Know this. And the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Let us stand up and pray. When I come back and find my home at peace, I will always praise Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, when I come back and find my home at peace, I will always praise Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, when I come back and find my home at peace, I will always praise Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. When I find my possessions plundered, I will not grieve or point fingers. I will go and cry out to Yahweh for solution. In the name of Yeshua, when I find my possessions plundered, I will not grieve or point fingers. I will go and cry out to Yahweh for solution. In the name of Yeshua, when I find my possessions plundered, I will not grieve or point fingers. I will, I will go, go and go cry out to Yahweh for a solution. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All Lord. to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. When I'm stripped of all possessions and brought low, Lord, 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 Father, Lord. Father Yahweh, use this situation to raise me to the throne in the order of David. In the name of Yeshua, when I'm stripped of all possessions and brought low, Father Yahweh, use this situation to raise me to the throne. In the order of David, in the name of Yeshua, when I am stripped of all possessions and brought low. Father Yahweh, use the situation to raise me to the throne. In the order of David, thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. When I am brought low, I will encourage myself in Yahweh my God. In the name of Yeshua, when I am brought low, I will encourage myself in Yahweh my God. In the name of Yeshua, when I'm brought low, I will encourage myself in Yahweh my God. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. 
Mm. I will take encouragement from Yahweh in my worst times. In the name of Yeshua, I will take encouragement from Yahweh in my worst times. In the name of Yeshua, I will take encouragement from Yahweh in my worst times. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I mean, say, we pray. In all my just ways, Father Yahweh, I acknowledge you. Direct my steps. In the name of Yeshua, in all my just ways, Father Yahweh, I acknowledge with you. Direct my steps. In the name of Yeshua, in all my just ways, Father Yahweh, I acknowledge you. Direct my steps. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Because Christ's followers are not allowed vigorous in their spiritual pursuit and conflicts, and make, I must make them strong. By the sufficient grace of Christ, in the name of Yeshua, because Christ's followers are not alike vigorous in their spiritual pursuits and conflicts, I will make them strong by the sufficient grace of Christ, in the name of Yeshua, because Christ's followers are not alike vigorous in their spiritual pursuits and conflicts, I will make them strong by the sufficient grace of Yahweh, thank you all to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. When I chase unknown enemies, Father Yahweh, set the Egyptian instrument of their destruction on my path. In the name of Yeshua, when I chase unknown enemies, Father Yahweh, set the Egyptian instrument of their destruction on my path. In the name of Yeshua, when I chase unknown enemies, Father Yahweh, set the Egyptian instrument of their destruction on my path. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. I shall neither do injuries nor deny kindness to any man. In the name of Yeshua, I shall neither do injury nor deny kindness to any man. In the name of Yeshua, I shall neither do injury nor deny kindness to any man. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. To deny my spirit, spiritual enemies the greatest advantage, I will not fall into the sensuality and indulgence in the name of Yeshua to deny my spiritual enemies the greatest advantage. I will not fall into sensuality and indulgence in the name of Yeshua to deny my spiritual enemies the greatest advantage. I will not fall into sensuality and indulgence. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Because of excess eating, drinking, and dancing, I will be careful not to sink into death. In the name of Yeshua, because of excess eating, drinking, and dancing, I will be careful not to sink into death. In the name of Yeshua, because of excess eating, drinking, and dancing, I will be careful not to sink into death. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Amen. I pursue, overtake, recover my possession and more from the hands of my enemies by the power of Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, I pursue, overtake, recover my possessions and more from the hands of my enemies by the power of Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, I pursue, overtake, recover my possessions and more. From the hands of my enemies by the power of Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Any spoils recovered from my enemies, I will redistribute the need to the needy. In the name of Yeshua, any spoils recovered from my enemies, I will redistribute you to the enemies, the needy. In the name of Yeshua, any spoil recovered from my enemies. I will redistribute you to the needy. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Because Yahweh is the giver of my abundance, I will dispose of it with fairness and liberality. In the name of Yeshua, because Yahweh is the giver of my abundance, I will dispose of it with fairness and liberality. In the name of Yeshua, because Yahweh is the giver of my abundance. I will dispose of it with fairness and liberality. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your answers to our prayers. 
Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray.